if you're anything like me, you probably hate having to use this Proxmox uh, web UI um, to interact with your VMs. As you can see, the cursor is fairly slow. It's kind of difficult to copy paste um, the commands into your terminal, for example. So let me show you a better solution, which is to use Windows built in remote desktop client. So this is what it looks like. And as you can see, I can just go ahead and Google things. Um, it's way easier to use my cursor. So if that sounds good to you, stay tuned to find out how it's done. So in the description below, I've linked an article by DigitalOcean, which will explain how to install all the necessary dependencies on your virtual machine. And I've gone ahead and SSH into my server. Um, and we're just going to go down the list and install these packages one by one. So first, let's install X, uh, uh, FCE4 and X, FCE4 goodies. And there we have it. Next, we'll install XRDP itself. And then we're gonna check that it's actually running. And as you can see, uh, it's actually active right now, active running, so we're all good to go. If it's not running, you can start it by just typing in this command right here. All right, so now we can actually try out and see what happens when we try to connect to this VM. And as you can see right here, my IP address um, or the IP address of the server is this right here. So look for a similar one um, if you don't know exactly what your IP is. And then you can head over to your remote desktop connection on Windows and type in this IP address. And you should probably uh, unselect any kind of username that you might have saved from previous configurations. Anyways, once you're done typing your IP address, just hit connect. And you already get this window, which looks promising. However, typically when you try entering your credentials, it'll crash on you. So let's cover how to fix this. All right, so in order to fix this, what you actually have to do is head over to your Proxmox GUI, um, find the VM itself and click on console and then hit the power button up here to open the power menu and then click on log out. And once you've done this, you can head over to your remote desktop application, type in the IP address, hit connect, type in your username, your password, and you'll be logged into the session. So then you'll have to enter your password again. And now you're in. So let's go ahead and make this entire setup a little more convenient. First thing we're gonna do is open the remote desktop session once again, or rather the uh, program and just make sure the IP is obviously specified. And now you can go ahead and actually enter your username and definitely hit allow me to save credentials, head over to display. And most of you will uh, wanna have this in, in full screen. So I'll go ahead and toggle that. And also if you wanna use multiple monitors, you can also hit use all my monitors for the remote session. If you have a good connection, definitely uh, make sure to select the highest quality and that should pretty much uh, take care of this. And then what you can also do is save this uh, as a connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as um, my test bench remote desktop connection. And then what you can do is uh, actually open up this file which you just saved. Okay, so let's go ahead and try out this configuration file. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, double click it and make sure to type in my password. And a word of warning, uh, this can be somewhat buggy, um, especially when you uh, project this to a, a larger um, 
display like I have a 4k screen right here so whenever I minimize tabs um, it'll be quite a bit slower however once you're actually in a program uh, I do find that it's quite responsive and you can uh, you know click on a YouTube video for example um, and it should pretty much uh, load and, and it's definitely much more responsive than the web UI in my opinion and um, you can also probably improve this quite a bit by downscaling the resolution if you have a 1080p display this should work much much better and it's also obviously dependent on the hardware you have in your server if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful liking subscribing commenting and sharing would be greatly appreciated any of these will help the growth of the channel thank you and until next time